The book that I've chosen to review for the digital book review assignment is History Goes to the Movies by Marty Hugh Warrington. This book is a study of history and the, and the complications of its form as well as the uses of history in film. Her overarching argument is that films about history are the easiest to understand by the general public and the easiest to get. Um, so buy Netflix, Crave TV, DVD, VHS, I don't know, whichever your perfect type of um, way to watch your film or documentary or TV series is, that's the easiest way for the general public to get their history because no person is just going to walk into the Carlton Library and they can't just take out a book on ancient Rome, I guess to each their own, but generally people like to watch uh, films to get their history. Documentaries um, are the best example of this in the book and she says that even documentaries have their own biases be it uh, money politics opinion um, complications on uh, facts whatever it is they're not perfect and they can't tell a whole story and so when someone's sitting and watching this documentary it's not like they can take in the entirety of the Roman Republic in the half an hour to an hour and a half documentary that they are watching. Um, so it might be the easiest way, but there are complications to documentaries, but they also prove to be a really positive form of history, uh, especially when it comes to other fictional movies or uh, TV series that kind of change, even if it's just small aspects, they change more than a documentary would, because documentaries are there to give you facts. The next example, excuse me, that she gives for the novel are children's films. Children's films can also cause a problem, uh, such as Disney films, uh, Pocahontas, uh, Pinocchio, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, they are all forms of history and are telling historical narrative, but they are twisted in some of them by a Eurocentric kind of narrative or a white narrative or a romantic narrative or a fictional narrative, but still talk about history. Um, and this can lead children to come to a false idea of what history actually is. Um, I believe that that specific argument is right, but at the same time, I think she's reading a little bit too deep into it. Um, children can be taught many different things and have changed thereby. I watched Pocahontas and Pinocchio as a child, and I can tell you that I don't believe in dolls who noses grow when they lie, and I now know about the transatlantic colonies to the Americas so my history has not been changed by those films. One of the arguments Warren to makes for films is history in films is the use of hyper reality in films particularly Schindler's List and how um, how they filmed it in black and white and the different perspectives that they used um, create a sense of um, putting the viewer in a sympathetic uh, stance saying that they can almost feel the terror and the horror that happened during these awful awful times obviously it's not a real empathetic feeling because they weren't some of them weren't alive or they didn't experience that kind of terror but the movie can create that feeling for them and it might lead them to do more research learn more about it and it's a fictional narrative, but it hits a historically fictional narrative. Quite a lot of it is true. The dialogue, obviously, is fictional. In short, Warrington's examination of history and film pieces history in a complicated gr places film history in a complicated gray area because it's the most popular form of digesting history. There is no way to regulate um, 
the money that's spent on it or how people engage with it because of bias and opinion but there are positive uses that come out of it being so universally available um thank you very much